Greetings in the name of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. We're so excited to have you join us right here at the Mount Enon Missionary Baptist Church, 1501 West 3rd Street. Guys, we want to thank you and your family for being a part of our family. Today, as this broadcast begins, we want you to enjoy the Word of God as we also invite you to come in person right here at 8.45 a.m. Our Sunday school takes place and then at 10 o'clock a.m. our regular worship service. Join us for any one of our very blessed Bible studies Wednesday at 11 a.m. and Wednesday 6.30 p.m. along with Saturday at 11 a.m. Guys, we'd love to have you and your family join us here in Jesus' name. We want to thank you so much for listening to our weekly broadcast. We want to invite everyone to our outpouring conference where we will be educated, equipped, and empowered for the kingdom of God. Our conference will begin on October 15th with our morning service beginning at 10 a.m. and will proceed nightly Monday, October 16th through Wednesday, October 18th. Beginning at 5 p.m. nightly, dinner will be served. Uh, 6 o'clock p.m., our School of Christian Education will be in session and will be blessed by Bishop Mark Monroe, pastor of the Second Baptist Church in Middletown, Ohio. And at 7 p.m., revival will be in full effect. All of our ministries will be in place and ready to serve, and we will be blessed to hear from Pastor Antonio Jackson, pastor of the Christ Temple Church in Mobile, Alabama. This is a conference that you don't want to miss and we are inviting you and your family to please join us as we are expecting a mighty move of God. If you have any questions, please call our church office at 937-222-0867 or check out our website at www.mountenanbaptist.org. We look forward to seeing you there and it is our prayer that you enjoy the rest of our broadcast and know that because Mount Enan cares, we share. Will you pray with me? Gracious and all eternal God, it is today that we say thanks. We are very thankful for the things you've done thus far, and we're very appreciative for what you're getting ready to do. We ask you now that in the midst of turmoil, trial, and tribulations, in the lives of those who are watching right now, we ask that you'd please calm every storm. And Father God, I pray that your word and your will will challenge us to become better on a daily basis, for we know that all things work together for the good to them that love you and those who are called according to your purpose. We ask that these prayers will be answered in your son Jesus' name. Amen.
been talking about, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> the conforming power of the Holy Spirit. And in the process of discussing such, it is important that we understand that God, I believe, first of all, I need everybody to write this down if you can. We've done this in Bible study, and I think this is befitting today. I think that God is conforming us to worship. His Holy Spirit is conforming us to become greater in worship. How many of you agree with that? Uh, in fact, the reason why I challenge you to see that is because there are several passages that, uh, that agree one with the other. In fact, James was one of them. James says that count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. And he came to the place where he says knowing Come on, say knowing, knowing. which it, it, it was an indication, it seemed that it was something that we as the saints of God should have knowledge of. It says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. So, in essence, I'm basically suggesting that James is saying that allow the challenges of life, the trials and tribulations of life to operate as conforming elements. Uh, however, we see the preceding element. You must understand that when James says this, he already said it at the beginning after, uh, after he says, rather, uh, count it all joy. He talks about joy, so it's Judy, but then he yet goes into the diverse temptations after the fact. Does that make sense? So in other words, these elements are juggling between each other because Sister Jaqueta, what happens is James says that in the midst of your trials, tribulations, and troubles, he says, count it joy even before you get there because we are anticipating knowing this. You see that? Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Then Paul picks it up, if you please, concurring with John or James and suggests, he says, uh, for we know. Are y'all in here with me? Uh, uh, for we know that all things work together for the good to them who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. Does that make sense? Uh, in every instance where we see trouble and trial, we discover that at the end of trouble and trial, there's always some end result that brings about productivity and success for the believer. If I was preaching to the right crowd, somebody would have said amen right there. In other words, uh, you understand, Ms. Meyer Scott, that uh, in the midst of your troubles, your trials and tribulations, God always intends uh, for you to experience joy in your life. God allowed his son Jesus to come into the world and he suggests, watch this, he says, uh, 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 God sent not his son into the world, uh, Sister, uh, what's your name? Sister Cynthia. Uh, not to condemn the world, but that through him, men might be saved. So in other words, we understand and discover in many different passages that God does not want to hurt us. Are you with me here? In fact, there are those of you who can testify and attest to uh, whoopings, and I was going to use the word spankings. There's a difference between a spanking and a whooping. All right, so there are those of us who've experienced whoopings. And when you get a whooping, watch this, that whooping came as a result of something that you may not, may or may not have done as you were requested to do. Are you with me here? And that whooping came in to bring about the necessary correction uh, uh, that would make you and I get on the right track and make an effort to make the right decisions to become what it is that your parents and God will have required that you be. Does that make sense? And as a result of this, today's text today is very significant because we'll find one Jehoshaphat, one of the good kings, if you please, who operates and the chronicler here writes about the elements of Jehoshaphat's reign, uh, but he talks about some significant details because uh, uh, Jehoshaphat had previously connected himself to Asaph. Are y'all with me here? Ahab, I'm trying to say. Somebody say Ahab. Ahab. And Ahab was under the auspices of, come on, Jezebel. Y'all ain't listening to me. Ahab had connected himself to 
all types of worldly rudiments and elements that existed in the world. And as a result of that, Jehoshaphat, uh, failing to be uh, totally theocentric in his, uh, uh, in his thoughts and in his thinking, he finds himself rubbing shoulders with one like Ahab. And as a result of that, you must understand that you have to be careful of who you rub shoulders with. Because if those individuals are not persons that God is pleased with, God does not want us, Brother Ben, to have company with those individuals because of the way they believe. Can you say amen to that? And you got to understand that it wasn't just about the way he believed, but he was trying to coerce the environment to become a changed environment. We won't have time to read all of this. In fact, uh, if, you, if you'll read, skip on down to about verse, uh, uh, where do we start in Bible study? Help me, Sister Sheila and Sister, uh, where do we start in Bible study? Who came to Bible study? Can you tell me where we started? Look at about verse 5. Skip down to about verse 5. Let's see what's happening there. Can you get there, Dorothy? I'm, yeah. All right, go back. Go, let's, let's, let's start at verse 1 then. Let's go. All right, let's look at what's actually going on. Again, I promise I'll be done in just a few moments. Watch this. Then Jehoshaphat, let's go back to uh, verse 1, Dorothy. I know it's kind of slow with you sometimes. All right. It happened after this, the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle where? Against Jehoshaphat. Now this was right after Jehoshaphat had hooked himself to Ahab and he had connected himself to something that he had no business connecting himself to. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat saying, a great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea from Syria, and they are in Hazan Tamar, and which is in Gedi. Are you with me here? And Jehoshaphat was afraid. You see that, don't you? Jehoshaphat was afraid. He feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim what? A fast throughout all Judah. You see it? So Judah gathered together to ask the Lord, come on, ask the help of the Lord, and from all the cities of Judah, they came to do what? Now, I'm going to show you some crazy stuff in just a moment. Because we the church, somebody say we the church. We the saints. We have a tendency of asking the Lord for directions. But I'm getting ready to show you that directions come. Are you with me here? And many times we fail unlike this group of people we fail to do what the word of god or the instructions entail and we find ourselves in a crazy place so uh, we see that he was afraid he then calls a fast you see it and then jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of judah and jerusalem in the house of the lord before the new court here it is and said O lord god of our families are you not god in heaven and do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hands is there not power and might so that no one is able to withstand you? You see it? Are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to uh, uh, the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever? You hear him talking now? He says, these people are trying to drive us out of the land that you promised us. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? They're trying to drive us out of this land that you promised us, you've given it to us, and now they're trying to evict us. You see it? And Jehoshaphat, not only is he afraid, he calls for a fast, but he also begins to pray. It is a clear indication that if you ever get in a place where you're afraid of anything, guess what? Fasting and prayer will always help you to succeed through those moments. All right? And they dwell in it and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name. Say, if disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, 
we will stand before this temple and in your presence for your name is in this temple and cry out to you in our affliction and you will hear us and say did you hear what they said they said that listen no matter what trial comes our way no matter what trouble comes our way what we are devoted to do is that because you blessed us with this place we've now built a temple in your name we're going to go to this place and we're going to in the midst of our trial tribulation and in the midst of emergency we're going to worship you that's what they said they said in the face of alarm and emergency they said we're going to worship you y'all ain't got it yet they said when we're broke and our account is in the negative we're going to worship you y'all ain't got it let me try it. they said when the doctor said that there was nothing else they could do we have determined in our hearts that because your name is on this place and you are the God who answered before. Y'all still ain't got it. We're going to worship you. Y'all ain't got it. I mean, let me see. Because they said that they were going to pull your car, pull your truck. The van is gone. Everything is all lost. They said, listen, regardless of what we see. With the capabilities of our physical dexterity, we are not. I don't care what we see. We are going to worship. We want to thank you so much for listening to our weekly broadcast. We want to invite everyone to our outpouring conference where we will be educated, equipped, and empowered for the kingdom of God. Our conference will begin on October 15th with our morning service beginning at 10 a.m. and will proceed nightly. Monday, October 16th through Wednesday, October 18th. Beginning at 5 p.m. nightly, dinner will be served. At 6 o'clock p.m., our School of Christian Education will be in session and will be blessed by Bishop Mark Monroe, pastor of the Second Baptist Church in Middletown, Ohio. And at 7 p.m., revival will be in full effect. All of our ministries will be in place and ready to serve, and we will be blessed to hear from Pastor Antonio Jackson, pastor of the Christ Temple Church in Mobile, Alabama. This is a conference that you don't want to miss, and we are inviting you and your family to please join us as we are expecting a mighty move of God. If you have any questions, please call our church office at 937-222-0867 or check out our website at www.mountenanbaptist.org. We look forward to seeing you there, and it is our prayer that you enjoy the rest of our broadcast and know that because Mount Enon cares, we share. Y'all still ain't got, let me try this group right here. When hell has broken loose everywhere, when the devil is on a rampage, when he's trying to kill me and my children, we will worship. Hey! Tell somebody, say, neighbor, I just look like this. And now, here are the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. Who you would not let Israel fade when they came from, come on, the land of Egypt. But they turned from them and did not destroy them. Say, Lord, you didn't let us kill them when they came over. We could have got them in. Here they are rewarding us by coming to throw us out of your possession which you have given us to inherit. Did you hear it? Oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we don't have any power against this great multitude. I can't afford whatever is in front of me, but you have the power. Lord, I can't fight them. Have your seats. And I'll be done by the time I finish reading this. Watch this. 
We can't fight them. But Lord, you have the power. We don't have the power to fight against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do, come on, we know what to do. Now see, when you get in that place, you don't have room to become big and bad in yourself. Look at the pronouncements in the text. They say, we don't know what to do. We don't have the power. So we have to totally lean and depend on you. I know y'all don't like this kind of preaching. I don't have nothing else to say to y'all. I'm finna show you. But God has an answer on the other side of your request. Now all Judah with their little ones, their wives and their children stood before the Lord. Then you prayed you fasted, yes. you made it known that you could not handle it, yes. and you just stood in front of the Lord, yes. and you said, okay, God, what you going to do? Yes. Then the Spirit of the Lord. Yes. <sighs> came upon somebody, somebody say somebody. Yes. somebody. Not some prophet, not some well-known evangelist. Not somebody seeking popularity or celebrity. Y'all real quiet. But just somebody in the congregation. The spirit came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, uh, and, and Mattaniah. Skip those. Come on, keep on going. A Levite son's ASAP in the midst of the assembly. Watch this. It didn't say that he was somebody that was well known by everybody. This was just somebody in the group that God used to speak to the people of God. Y'all got y'all gotta help me. When you stand still, you'd better be careful because the least of them can tell you that be not dismayed, whatever be tied, God will take care. The least of them, the Spirit of the Lord, will allow somebody ain't got no money to tell you that God will make a way somehow. God will allow the poorest of them to tell you that God is able to bring you out. You better be careful how you treat people because the Spirit of the Lord will use anybody in our midst. Y'all don't like this kind of preaching. I'm sorry. And he said, somebody say he said. He said. Listen. Listen. You're standing before the Lord because you don't know what to do. Now you stood before him and he says, listen. All you Judah, now listen, that wasn't some voice that just came out of nowhere. God uses his people to speak to his people. And Judah, you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid or dismayed. Because of whatever you're going through. I'm talking to somebody right now. Do not be afraid or dismayed because of whatever has come up against you. It may be bigger than you. It may seem mightier than you. It may seem like it's swallowing you up. You may seem defeated. You may seem like you're not going to make it. But oh, I got news for you. The text says, he says, don't be afraid. And don't you worry because this battle, this battle, this battle is not yours. But it belongs to the Lord. Tell somebody if you can with great vigor and holler like me and tell them uh, this battle. Y'all ain't hollering loud enough. Tell somebody this battle is not yours. Whatever you're going through, it's not your problem. Wherever you are in your life, it's not your problem. God is going to fight your battles. When y'all going to shout in this place? I'll tell you when you shout, I know when you're going to shout is when you believe the word of God. 
Ask a neighbor if you will, whose report will you believe? It may be bigger than you. It may seem to outweigh you. But he told them, don't be afraid. The battle is not yours, but God's. Come on. Come on. Now here it is. You're standing before the Lord. You said you didn't know what to do. Didn't you say it? You said you didn't know what to do. I said, you said you didn't know what to do. You said, I can't handle it. You said, it's too big for me. You said, God, you know how to handle matters that are bigger than I am. You said you were standing in the face of God. Now God is speaking back to you. So you need to stand there, be still a moment before you do anything because the text says, tomorrow, go down against them. How long? They too big. We don't have any weaponry. We don't have trained uh, soldiers. We don't have anybody that we can whoop them with. They will surely come up by the asset of Ziz. And you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeroboam. Look at it. I know y'all can read. I know y'all can read. I know y'all can read. I know y'all can, can read. Previously he says, this battle is not yours. But then he still told you to go down and stand against them. Can I make you understand something? God allows you to stand in front of your enemies. Not for you to fight, but for you to simply wave the banner of victory. He says, I didn't tell you to go down and do anything other than face them. When you get ready to stand out there, he says, stand up there until I get ready to tell you what else to do. And guess what? If there ought to be somebody in here that has a victory banner in your hand, ready to wave because God has promised that the battle is not yours, but he was going to fight it. Look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, say what you want to do what you want to when you get ready to do whatever you get ready to do. God already told me not to fight. Here's a repeat affirmation to fight in this battle. See, see, so, some of y'all try to go, go against the word. Ain't nothing else I got to say. This is just Bible. Ain't nothing else but Bible. Position yourselves. yourselves stand still stand up don't move and simply see the salvation of the Lord 